Hai OJ, welcome back to Job Bites. Saya Randy, saya akan menjadi host di episode kali ini. Sebelum kita mulai, saya mau bilang terima kasih dulu untuk Studio K yang berada di Pondok Indah, Jakarta Selatan. Oke, episode kali ini kita akan membahas Unlock the Four Point Industry with Econometrics with our special guest, Serge Alexiev. Serge adalah senior uh, research fellow di University of Sydney dan memiliki pengalaman di beberapa organisasi such as NSW Department of Education. Serge has also published some publication about health, addiction, crime, and intergenerational transmission topic. So, Serge, how are you? Thank you for coming. Thanks for having me. So, uh, what I know, econometrics is an application of statistical method to economics data in order to give empirical content economics relationship. What is it like to be an econometrician? Um, well, in short, it's good. It's good. Uh, it's a good job uh, in in the sense that um, you usually get to choose um, subjects to explore, uh, but also depends the job you, that you get. Um, okay, let me back up a little bit. So, to okay. become an econometrician, uh, usually, uh, econometricians, as you said, it's a sort of an applied side of economics, okay. and in some really crude way, it's just basically statistics. But okay. today everything is statistics. If yeah. you even look at look at data science, it's all statistics. And econometrics, it's a it's a it's a way of testing economic theories using statistics. But because economists uh, have uh, um, usually cannot use clinical trials, they use so-called quasi-experimental methods. And so they sort of uh, econometrics. If you if you were to sort of say what we do is uh, we try to kind of understand the causal links between factors, uh, mm. but we do this without physical randomization, without mm. running clinical mm. trials. So, because the opposite way to kind of establish the causality is by running clinical trials. That's okay. what's standard in the other social sciences, such as medicine or criminology or psychology. Okay, so uh, there's a lot of job related to econometrician, exactly. right? Yeah, that's how to bring us to the job market. And mm. the job market for econometricians is pretty good. It's pretty good because uh, the choices are you can stay in academia and you can just be an academic. Usually those things, uh, a lot of people, I, I would say, mo it's hard to say, but my guess would be that most mm. people who get training in econometrics. Well, it depends on the level because a lot of people, you might just get an undergrad degree um, and uh, undergrad degree, and then you just uh, um, your options then would be private sector or public sector. For example, mm -hmm. as you mentioned, I, I used to work in the public sector too, and uh, you know, the public sector for public policy is essential to establish whether some policies uh, succeeded or not. And mm. uh, you know, in this econ econometrics and those are causal sort of quasi experimental methods are critical there. So this is public sector. Uh, also private sector. In the private sector, a lot of companies like Microsoft or Uber oh, yeah, or okay. Uber. all those, so they, they employ nutritions like a lot, but they usually employ them only in, in, the, um, in the central office because they would answer, they would, they would have like one research center mm -hmm. with specific tasks and they would, uh, um, and they would just answer, have, they would establish sort of a, some answer to the question and they would sort of then they would scale it to the uh, to globally okay so therefore if you uh, a lot of people for example so if you're undergrad you you could go in the private sector then you can go uh or public sector but if you have a phd and you still do applied work econometrics then you can also try academics also public sector and private sector so um from your view what's the qualities that needs for someone as an economician needs to be uh, successful to distinct econometrics from data science because there's a lot of buzz uh, around uh, yeah. uh, machine learning, uh, yeah. artificial AI, and yeah. um, um, all those sort of fields. And uh, so at some point I said that at the core of all the data science is just good old statistics from mm. 1960s. But at some point it branched out. And so we, we have a bias statistics that focuses on uh, analyzing clinical trials and uh, and they have their own statistical traditions. But at, at the core, they're very similar problems because we have data and you sort of try to model the data. You sort of try to identify some parameters. Uh, so it's by statistics. Um, econometrics, I think it established itself in 1990s. Uh, uh, and this is where 
the challenge and the specific traditions, the challenges that the, this sort of branch of statistics had to face was that you have to establish causality without possibility to physical randomize. So, mm. for example, let's say economists have some theory about trade. Okay. So how do you uh, uh, make a conclusion about the, you know, of the influence of one factor on another without being able to stop trade, for example, yeah. for, for a year to understand what's happening? And this is and this is what the an economist in the 1990s and still they still do. They develop this really cool methods that allow you to uh, uh, sort of use um, quasi experiments. And okay. this this is really uh, cool stuff because and so this is another field which I think established itself. Uh, is a, I don't remember, but this data science would be a separate field. And it also, it, it, the, the challenge of, of data science is different from, from biostatistics and different from uh, econometrics uh, because their task is mainly to predict. Yeah. Because the prediction. Right. So, for example, when you talk about biostatistics and econometrics, uh, uh, the, the primary task of data analysis is to establish the cause. Yes. Um, but with the uh, when we talk about um, data science and machine learning, the primary task is to establish what's going to happen tomorrow. Yeah, because that that's, this is a task which is uh, immediate for, for example, for uh, for sales department or you know for business because yeah. it has to be they have to make decisions uh, you know quickly. And so I think the data science establishes itself. Uh, so it would be a mixture of statistics and IT. Um, so it establishes itself. There's a paper I think. Maybe 2010, I think it's called something about the data science is the field because so data scientists for a long time, they would, they would struggle to, they would struggle to uh, establish themselves as discipline yeah. because, uh, because it's a bit of a joke because a lot of, it's, it's sort of a joke in, you know, in my sort of as a professional <laughs> joke. So because they, they it, when you look at the data science or machine learning, they essentially use the same models as we use, but they just call things differently. And sometimes okay, it see. feels a, li a little bit annoying because, you know, for example, but they have a cooler names. Yeah. They have a cooler names, you know, like, you're, for example, um, 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 I can't think of, uh, for example, a, a control variable vector, uh, they would call a features, data features or something yeah, like yeah. this. And it, it sounds cool, but yeah. Um, uh, and so they did it. So with the, to establish a discipline, uh, it has to, a, a separate discipline, it has to have a specific, a set of distinct methods and mm. set of distinct objectives and data science today uh it's a sort of with i would say again this is sort of my view of discipline yeah, i'm sure absolutely. alan musk or someone else have <laughs> different view <laughs> and uh, you know I'm, I'm, i've never sort of tried to kind of have a very uh very uh, very, uh, very strict you know thinking mm. about this but bottom line is that so econometrics kind of biostatistics and data science they all three branches of uh, statistics with different tasks What exactly people need a degree need, needs to be an econometrician. Mm -hmm. The right answer is that to get to become an econometrician, you need economics degree. Okay. But actually, as of now, I think econometrics becoming a field on its own. And the reason for this because 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 like I said, so be, to, to become a separate discipline, you need a, a distinct objective mm -hmm. and distinct methods. Um, <clears throat> and econometrics because um, because so economists were challenged. Uh, with this uh, with this question is that how to establish causality when we cannot run a run an experiment and therefore they were looking for some methods to to uh, to do that but the thing about this method is that they even if you change the if you get about economics methods stay and therefore for example I'm an economist that I'm not doing stuff which is sounds like economics I'm not looking at inflation or unemployment or economic growth I'm looking at addiction um, I'm looking at, uh, you know, other sort of things which traditionally has been studied by other disciplines. Mm. So, in this, so what I'm trying to say is that econometrics on its own, it, it came from economics, but now mm. econome econometrics methods and tools, they sort of become, become more popular in yeah. other social sciences. And in fact, uh, they are considered to be, uh, you know, the people really excited about this, especially, yeah. I know that a lot of, for example, all academics, they, I think maybe they feel threatened and they, they, I see a lot of resistance there too, because, you know, they don't understand, they, they never got training and they feel a little bit, but, but the future, what I'm telling you that the future, so the social scientists, uh, uh, the, the kind of metrics, the methods which econometrics apply, tr applied in economics mm. now apply in other social sciences. This is the future of data analysis.
this is this is what's coming. And so what I'm saying is that I can I, I think I, I'm I'm pretty sure that maybe I don't know have have you looked it up. Uh, maybe University of Sydney or some universities in, in Australia, they offer a dedicated degree in econometrics. It's, it's oh. possible. Maybe I wouldn't okay. be surprised because you do, you can, uh, you can learn those things uh, separately. For some of students, especially here in Indonesia, uh, I think uh, statistics is uh, difficult uh, for some students. Uh, I want to ask from your point of view, if, you, if I want to learn about uh, econometrics, how difficult it is. <laughs> well, like I said, so, um, um, like I said, so it's not really about difficult, it's about whether you are dedicated enough to that mm. stuff. Another thing is that you really need to get a, I would say you need to get a good teacher who would explain you the intuition. Because any mathematical formula is ultimately, is just an intuition which is, uh, mm. which is uh, put into symbols. And so when you look at the mathematical formula, it's, it, when, when mathematicians look at mathematical formula, mm. they don't think about all these squiggles and symbols, they think about the kind of concept behind. And so if you want to, I would say you need a teacher, but now because you have all this internet, you have online courses, yeah. you can access the best teachers just, you know, use just at home in your bathroom and in your kitchen. <laughs> uh, in kitchen. And the, so what I'm saying is that uh, I think because of the ease of getting uh, really good explanations, all yeah. it takes is just uh, dedication. Yeah, so basically it's just a dedication so we can learn, especially now we have a lot of internet guys, so we can learn everywhere. <laughs> you should naturally, you know, sort of follow the market. What's, what's, what's in demand? Okay. Um, and uh, um, for example, I might struggle to get a job in Indonesia. For oh, okay. Even if I have with all my credentials and you know and accumulated experience and skills, it, it, it is possible that I would, wouldn't get a job here. It's possible because there may not be demand for nutrition. Mm. So basically, what you're saying that uh, Google, let's say Google, Microsoft, Tesla, they have this kind of job uh, in their headquarters to. Uh, predict or explain the, their business model and everything, right? So uh, basically it's a very potential jobs also as econometrician. If you want to apply here, maybe in Indonesia, we have a lot of startups is coming. And if they want to consult with econometrician or data scientists, it will be very good, right? We can say that. Um. Beyond doubt, you must consult experienced economists when you're trying to uh, come up with the with the um, with the business model. Beyond doubt, mm. because you have to uh, you have to you have to uh, think about the say You have to have someone who has an experience of thinking about the incentives people face yeah. and whether they're going to follow your your business model. Mm. Um, there's a few examples about when there was this. Um, so economists are heavily involved in in let's say this. Economists consult, let's say eBay. In eBay, they have run auctions. Okay. And economists know everything about auctions. They know oh. so much, but there's an auction theory about yeah. that. And um, economists have improved eBay substantially. Uh, they designed the optimal way uh, for auctions to run on eBay. Um, for example, there was some issue. Uh, there's, there's multiple ways you can design mm -hmm. design auctions, and then the way it's designed at eBay is, is is optimal in the sense of maximizing the transactions. Another problem on Uber, for example, the the idea of uh, changing the price depending on yeah. the supply of demand in the particular area. This is economics. This is simply yeah. economics, and these business models are, are based on 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 the economics thinking. Mm. Um, and uh, you can, maybe you have some other business models in mind. So I just can't think of uh, anything else. But, but I'm sure there is. Oh yeah. So one thing about this, this is this is kind of a niche thing. Uh -huh. uh, for example, uh, how to control the, the electricity grid, oh, how, okay. to, uh, how to how uh, to optimize. Uh, so because the, when when you want you want to kind of these uh, businesses and uh, consumers and they you want to sustain the network, you want electricity, mm -hmm. you want electricity to be cheap and and available so yeah. that there is no uh, blackouts. And the uh, engineers, they came up with these really clever solutions that you put everyone in one grid and you yeah. command everyone. But uh, the problem with this approach was, and that was a, and it, for, for many years, and this is in some states in America where they have these, I don't remember how it's called, but essentially it's like one dispatch center where yeah. 
an engineer. So they put all the supplies of electricity in one grid okay. and they tell everyone what to supply. But the problem with this approach is that um, it's often that, that the uh, supplies of electricity have incentive to withhold their capacity okay. because, because if they withhold the capacity, they might have higher prices. And so this is called incentive compatibility. That you might think, for example, you might think that this is really good idea. Let's do that. Yeah. But you actually, when you think about the optimizing agent who is uh, who is making decisions, uh, he may he may decide not to supply, and that actually ruins the whole the whole idea. Yeah. So that's why economists came up with this idea of auctions of auctions because with with the auctions you can, uh, um, like I think with the great they use it. Not the option, but option. They sort of, but anyway, they found they found they found this really cool solution, uh, which respects the fact that individual supply individual supply of electricity uh, may may have an incentive to withhold electricity to increase the price uh, for his yeah, output. Yeah. And so this just is just more a more arcane example of uh, of, of ap application of economics thinking to business to business models, and they are everywhere. Okay, so actually it's a, yes, some kind of uh, flow. You, you you make some flow to maximize the uh, to optimize the uh, benefit or the full potential of one things. Uh, for example, like you said, the electricity, how they the supply and the demands, how they designing the the system itself, things like that, right? Do you have do you find any challenge challenging to implementing something in industry 4.0 as an econometrics? Well, let's put it this way. So I, okay. I have more experience with this so because I'm, I'm I've been working I've been I've been studying economics and mm. so my training is economics. But actually, I work in the medical uh, faculty right now. Okay. And as I as I, as I said that okay. there's a lot of statistical sort of work they do is is follows the tradition of my statistics. Um, but the thing about this my training it's often that you can improve some of the things that they do and that you can do them better and you can do them cheaper because sometimes you mm. don't have to run a clinical trial. Well, and the, yes, there is a lot of sort of, you know, resistance to that because oh, they have yeah. their own, you know, ways of doing things and they may also have incentives, career incentives, maybe yeah, yeah. someone doesn't want to improve the methods because, you know, there's, um, uh, again, this is, again, we're thinking about, the, mm. it's about economics, the, the incentive people face. Yeah. And often people are resistant, even even if the whole organization might benefit from something, an individual may resist the change because in his particular case, he he would he might be worse off, you know. And so yeah, so yes, I mean, uh, it's like I said. So it, it's important to that there should be some sort of collective understanding of of the power of econometrics. And even when we look at the developing the developed countries, America, Australia. Uh, even even there, the me these methods are only sinking in now. You know, so if we can run uh, this role as an econometrics, what does the impact can be uh, can be given to the industry 4.0? So this is uh, my understanding is that it's all about uh, like a new information technologies that allow yeah. for you know information storage yes. and uh, better communication you know plant organizations probably there's probably not going to be an, an answer specific to econometrics it's just uh, okay so basically the, yeah as the uh, econometrics we can uh, have part of uh, impact in the in, uh, industry with we implement uh, we applied it as a uh, let's say data analyst and let's say as a um, uh, data scientist so we can have uh, like you said, uh, optimizing the business models or business roles that that's what uh, Microsoft and Uber do, did. Uh, thank you uh, for your time today. Very, very, very a lot of insight I get since, like I said to you, I, I really don't uh, understand about the econometrics and everything and how we can implement it. Uh, maybe same as uh, our audience here, OGs so they can uh, apply it in their workload uh, and everything. Okay, thank you for watching Job Bytes. Uh, this show has been brought to you by Orbit Jobs and our sponsors. So check us out on our Instagram at orbitjobs.id. And if you love the Job Bytes, we love for you to download and install our application on Google Play and also uh, App Stores. And don't forget to follow us. See you next time, OJs. Okay.